tata wao kina nas kam tina wao e big yogeg e big wa go tabeg at se wat son for the past few years we have been standing under a shadow of fear our own resilience created for some a time of needed rest a moment to recharge our batteries for others it was a time of struggle and insecurity what did we learn from covid did our community truly stand together or were families torn apart victims isolated with their offenders job loss and friendship strained often times circumstances don't resonate with us until we've experienced them i like to believe that we did learn something from our experiences if like me you felt the urgency for a stronger sense of belonging and community then it's time to build it ourselves and with each other in mind we are the people that make up this native land and we need to stand on guard for one another in the area of our own mental health it's time to start practicing self governance it's our way to become glorious and free my mother was a revolutionary and my father a poet we have lived in alberta for over 40 years and together with our neighbors from all nations we have made it our home Through thick and thin, the people of Red Deer are naturally intuitive. It's no surprise that many of us are thinking along the same wavelength when it comes to our sustainability as a multicultural city. This is a story of possibility. We have resources to build a science center, an arts common, and a cultural village, and it needs to be sustainable with urban agriculture supported by healing plants to teach us about spirituality and our world. This is our responsibility to the people of the future. May I have your attention please? Do you feel that practicing preventative mental health techniques will teach you to self-govern? Does anyone know what self-governing means? Excuse me. Yeah. You might have asked a quick question? Yeah, why not? How important is mental health to you? It is quite important to me. How come? Because as someone around my age, I deal with burnout because I don't do things when I should at school and then I bring it to home and it's not good that. Uh, I think a lot of students this year, um especially to get into high school, are very prone to putting their mental health second and I think that's something that we should really be focusing on. Do you feel that it's important to learn mental health, preventative mental health? Techniques? Yes, 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 cuz if anyone has learned this with some sort of mental health issue, they'd be able to, you know, learn some coping mechanisms so then they can deal with their self, with their mental health. That's awesome. Do you feel that um the school should be responsible for that? Yes, because if like we're here to learn, right? So why shouldn't we learn about something about ourselves, learn more about ourselves, or learn more about what's happening in our brains. I think that a lot of people struggle with mental health, but since we don't talk about it enough, they don't know how to help themselves and they have to deal with it alone. Yeah, mental health is really important. I mean, sometimes it's even more important than physical health. It goes together, but yeah, you have to take care of it. As a person who struggles with like depression and anxiety, I think it is so important. You think it should be taught in the schools? Absolutely. I think we don't talk about it enough. <laughs> So if we had a space for, you know, youth to come and practice, you know, preventative mental health techniques that were supported, you know, by the school but not during school hours, is that something that you would want to go to? Yes, yes, it would be great to learn some better skills to help myself and to help other people because I think that would be really helpful. I think it would be great to have just like resources in general because yeah, like therapy so expensive and just like even if people like their home lives aren't safe i think that that would be a great place to find people to help you with that i think it'd be very beneficial i think having a space like that would really do some good to students our age but also adults and younger children as well equine therapy and healer patrick buffalo 
talks about the importance of having a healthy mind. There's two steps that I've identified. Okay, first step is uh, self-awareness. And what that means um, is self-awakeness. People have to wake up. Question number three, are you scared? Are you scared? Are you scared? Are you scared? <laughs> Why is she scared? Okay, scared does not mean terrified. Scared could mean uncertainty. Being aware of how we feel is determined by being awake to how we think. Everything starts with a thought, okay? And that thought is going to be determined by how healthy a person is. Patrick brings up a powerful point. I met with the mayor of Red Deer to discuss his views on mental health. We're just wondering if you feel like there is a place in Red Deer where citizens can practice preventative mental health techniques. That's a fantastic question. You know, some people say that cities are not in the mental health business and nothing could be further from the truth. Cities are very much involved in mental health. So just a few practical things. I mean, where we are here this morning, the gardens, the walkability of place, the opportunity for people to be outside, to congregate, all those good things, that strengthens mental health. One of the areas we were thinking of for a space for healing would be the North Michener lands. Yes, the city is, has just taken possession of a piece of the North Michener lands. There's, there's some visioning around that uh, for an aquatic center, a park system, and so on. You talk about a place of healing. But there's also a, a very, very in, intentional inclusion of, of what those grounds were originally used for and the institution that the Michener Center was. So we want to honor the history of, of that institution and the people that went through that institution as well by an interpretive center, for example, Will we bring that healing center? Um, yes, it's, it's, it's visioning. It's something I've had my heart on. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, it's, uh, it's all about sometimes in politics, it's public will and capital. <laughs> Just will. a couple of, of uh, yes, and usually capital will follow public will. You're so right about that. So you've given me something to think about for sure. Public will is a vital component in the area of political participation and government accountability it doesn't hurt to ask for what our community needs. The healing center will be intentionally impacting on our citizens with clearly defined principles to address unconscious bias. Its goal? To acknowledge historical and current marginalization and move towards with an engaged community that is conscious of the past with a vision to a more inclusive, respectful future. Once upon a time, there was a large home built on native land that was rich with indigenous history. But that story had been denied of its telling, and for many people, long ago forgotten. The home was built on the north side of Michener Hill, and inside there lived a family of strangers. They shared one common trait, they were outcasts, people whose families struggled to care for them because they were born with developmental disabilities. Tales of eugenics tainted its dark history, but despite its negative reputation, its inhabitants filled the halls with laughter and were happy. A real family supported by people who cared for them as one would a child. Because of time, the near 100-year-old buildings needed repair. But for people at the mercy of kindness, there's seldom that kind of money to spare. 28 buildings suffered destruction because of lack of vision and lack of funds. Hundreds of people were left unemployed and the family that had once thrived for so long was torn apart. The land sat idle for many years, healing of its trauma, waiting for its next uncertain fate. 
Healers came from all around to bless the land and cure it. Good to the community. Lives will be restored. Setting an intention for a healing and personal growth center. A new story will be written for these lands. What the story tells is up to us. So mental health healing is very important for me uh, because it's when I'm reflecting on healing, it has to be the body, mind, and spirit. So when we say that, that everything has to be balanced, so the healing within myself, uh, through my ancestors, but also it's so important that it's for myself, my family, community, and world as a whole. Let's meet the work bees in our community. Hi, my name is Deborah Gregson, and I'm the executive director of a, a new organization called DMG, Do More Good Social Benefit Housing and Community Development Corporation. We are here in front of the Michener as a, an important symbol of wasted time and resources. This complex has been closed for a number of years, and from all the reports that we can get, still is reasonably viable in, in many ways. And we wanna see what we as a community could do with this space to help solve some of the important social challenges and cultural challenges and economic challenges that this community is facing. So the concept of collaborative intentional development, I think I might have actually invented the phrase, but it's really about a community coming together, all different sectors, the, the business sector, the government sector, the social sector, the, the regular everyday people sector. So together, we're going to create something that gives us both what we need. It might not be perfect for everyone, but it's going to help the whole community grow together and thrive together. That's the idea of collaborative intentional development. We have resources that we don't even know that we have until we get together and look at each other and talk to each other and share stories with each other and create something amazing together that leaves no one behind. I'm Kathy Parsons, board chair for Rethink Red Deer. Urban agriculture is a great way to connect with community. It helps you relieve stress to be out working with plants and nature and empowering you to grow your own food and, and just enjoy sunshine and, and whatever level of activity that you're able to do. It can be made very accessible to all abilities so everyone can participate and the thrill of being able to plant a seed and watch it grow and produce food that feeds people is something that is really a very healing process for um, those that participate. We think Red Deer is really striving towards a permanent location where we can build community around food growing. And it's really important to have the kind of space where people can access it when they have the time. So work it within their schedule. They can bring along their family so it becomes family time if that's what they need to be able to do. And it doesn't matter whether they know how to grow or are just learning how to grow. There's stuff here. They don't have the stress of a, of a garden that they know they can't take care of. They can come here, spend the time that they need, spend it with their family, take home some produce or, or whatever. And there's people there to support them in all the other aspects so it can fit into a really busy life. One of the areas that we're really looking to expand with Rethink Red Deer and in growing is learning how to do more things and be able to access and use a space in the winter time. Possibilities include building a greenhouse that can be operated in a sustainable manner through the winter and being able to provide workshops and teaching space and that kind of thing so that we can learn what we need to be able to implement when springtime comes. Now that the land has been cleared, we can start to envision a center with all these requirements. This illustration shows what can be created in the space available. Specifically designed to address the social, economic, and generational gaps in our society, Rethink will be able to build natural gardens within a park system to explore art, horticulture, and food production, as well as skateboard, play games, or watch live music or theater. 
Each piece locks together using the least amount of material to build them. Plants will easily adapt to local conditions and will be accessible to seniors, people with disabilities, and teens as well as the general public. This design allows places for residents to go and meet someone new from the community and start the process of healing. It will show how easy and important it is to produce local organic food to remind us that the earth will provide our nutritional needs. This indigenous land is entrusted to our province. It can now be reclaimed for our healing. Projects like this um, are really important to a community and they don't happen by themselves. Volunteering is another really good way of being able to build community for yourself and well-being because you're connecting with other people who have a similar interest to you. So we're always encouraging people to volunteer in our projects, come and join our board of directors. Part of the sustainability path with Rethink Red Deer is that we don't use unnatural products in growing our food, so they're healthy and organic and uh, grown in very rich, healthy soil, so they're nutrient dense, which uh, contributes to people's health and um, well being. And um, that's how you do it. <laughs> give you a little bit of history about this documentary that we're working on. It basically promotes the idea of community leadership mm. and initiatives that will teach people how to practice inclusivity, how to practice getting along so that we don't have a title looming over ourselves in Red Deer as being a racist city. That's my nightmare. I, I, yeah, I agree with you. That's my nightmare. So our idea is whether it's on the Michener lands, which is ideal in the sense that it's land that can be reclaimed and in the heart of Red Deer, because we are growing east, um, it's the idea of having a space somewhere sure. where people can practice these things on a daily. A healing center in Red Deer would be an amazing thing to have because I think even with the connections as having Youth HQ there and other agencies, um, having that ability to heal within your community. There's so many different dynamics and if we have it all kind of in one area, it'll be easier for people to connect. Yeah, I remember walking the grounds and feeling so excited and visioning what it could look like and what it could be and uh, you talking about dreams that you had about it and I just it was really an amazing connection I think. I believe so too and I would like to say a divine connection yeah. because I did pray for you to come and yeah. to put the pieces together and I really feel that that land is waiting for this type of development. It always has been. It's a healing space that was given to the people of Red Deer to house their people that needed yeah. safety. And it should continue to stay that way. It's zoned for a hospital. It's got all the property attached to it, to parks and nature preserve. And there are organizations and businesses that really want to invest in this mm -hmm. type of venture yeah. uh, because they will get a good return. They will have you know, a legacy that they can build on mm -hmm. and it'll help so many people. And I believe it will save lives. Yep, absolutely. And at the same time, we, we, we're solving problems that will actually decrease the demand on our resources. So my belief is that, uh, that we can all come together as one, as part of the healing, um, and would like to work with other organizations or other ethnic people, because one of our, one of our teaching from the Aboriginal cultural component it is that all the four directions are important to us and in the four directions we have the four main colors which is white, yellow, red and black and to me that indicates that our ancestors are telling us we all have to work together to make this a better place to live. Hi, my name is Rob Ironside. I'm the president for the Red Deer Culture Heritage Society. And uh, I just really want to stress the importance of our organization and what we do in the community. Well, how many people are glad to be back down here at the Ponds for Canada Day? Yeah. First off, I want to thank who, all, everybody who came out to watch our fireworks at the Westerner two years in a row. If, if you were at the Westerner and saw the fireworks over the last two years, just raise your hand. I want to see how many people came out. 
it, it was excellent, and I'm so glad that you supported us then, and you're supporting us now. We're a real conduit to be able to have people meet and uh, know that other organizations and cultures exist here in Red Deer and that we don't all operate independently uh, by ourselves. Uh, the organization itself tries to do its best to support everybody and especially making newer groups feel welcome here in the community in Red Deer. Uh, culture is so important and sometimes I think we just take it for granted. Do you feel that a cultural centre would benefit our community? A cultural centre? Yes, I think it really would. Uh, give people a place to be able to meet and, uh, and, and just communicate and talk to each other. Um, I think that's one of the biggest things is just being able to communicate to each other and find out what each other's about. So many of us don't know. That's true. So with Canada Day being only once a year, do you think more having more events would promote that community inclusivity? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think a lot of people really enjoy Canada Day, but I don't know if they have the time to actually get to know the people behind the food booths and people that are up on the stage dancing. So I think something where people get to meet each other on a one-on-one -on -one basis would be really good. Hello, I am Donna Palutnik. I am embracing my Norwegian heritage through volunteering here at the Norwegian Loftus. Five years ago we said we need to do this every year. This is fun, this is a chance to bring people in. We include now the Viking community, which is great because as they say to us, they are so happy to partner with us. So it's, it's, it's just a place to celebrate who we are and where we came from. This is how we keep languages alive in all cultures. We need to use those languages and it's really fun to do it here at the Norwegian Loftus. The founding members always had a vision that there wouldn't be just one Norwegian cultural house in one park, that we could gather all the other cultures from around the world and have buildings or pavilions or ways that we could have almost like an international gathering place that there would be something going on all the time. Wouldn't it be fun to be together and make it a real destination for visitors coming to Red Deer to know that, oh, they've got an international village, you just have to see it. Part of it all is to find value so that when you live in a city, you say, this is my city. You know, you, you don't, you're not dying to leave. When I was younger, I had to leave because there were, there were no colleges or education institutions for arts yes. in that sense yeah, well said. and with arts being something that is in my opinion slowly leaving red deer as in as a, as a institution mm -hmm. artists are really struggling to find their footing what well, we need you know very much uh, a center for arts and um, so stay tuned that's all i'll say a uh, bit of a teaser there for 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 your uh, for your audience uh but uh, stay tuned Citizen voices are so important to the development of our city. We've got to get out and vote. If we really want to reshape our Red Deer, we need to have a say in the planning. A volunteer citizen council would be great because it would have true ethnic representation, indigenous leadership, and diversity at its foundational core. And many of these voices belong to people in our community. That voice is yours. Use it. Hello, my name is Suzanne Hermery, and I am the Executive Director of the Red Deer Arts Council. Uh, we had this amazing event back in September called the Capstone Night Market, and it was really a gorgeous evening and a gorgeous event. Uh, when you were going around to all the booths, everything was being handmade. So every booth owner was an independent business owner as well as an artist or an artisan. And this is the creative economy in action. This is what makes our life better and it's economic development for Red Deer. It starts with you. You get into a room together, you discuss the resources, who has what and who can share it and find out the best practices, find out all the things that we can collaborate on to make things better for the entire community. And so it's really exciting to see events like this happening in our community and uh, it's, it's wonderful. So support the arts and your culture community because Red Deer, this is what makes life worth living here. So it really does start with you.
an art common and film studio together need to be where the action is happening. We are historically in a new situation. Red Deer is being left behind when it associates with neurosciences. Can we achieve a unity of consciousness? Global integration? What science education outlets are there in Red Deer? I'm glad you brought that up because when I was elected mayor, one of the things that I ran on was diversifying, expanding our industry base. And so that would mean, for example, carbon capture, hydrogen technology, uh, the, the advance of in high-speed rail and transportation and so on. So would that by itself ignite uh, a science center? Possibly, for sure. You've given me something to think about this morning, that's for sure. What could happen with a science center that focuses on conservation of our resources and education, a place to practice the sciences of self in relation to this earth? Are we ready to talk about energy usage when it comes to our minds, creating realities? Can we talk about the nature of consciousness, intentionality, science there yet? Youth HQ, this is your place. That's our tagline. Your place dot dot dot. So to a kid, this is your place to grow, to make friends, to have fun, everything a kid wants to do. For a volunteer, this is also your place to grow. It's your place to get involved with children. It's your place to share your time and talents. And for your stakeholders in the community, it's your place to contribute, your place to donate, to your place to volunteer your time, so forth. Not all youth w uh, wanna be leaders, um, nor should they. But our philosophy is you at least need to be able to be a leader of yourself. And if you can lead yourself with confidence and your goal setting and, and self-esteem, uh, you'll be successful regardless. Now, if you wanna take the next step and lead others, then that opportunity is there for you to do that. All people are looking for a sense of belonging, acceptance, going somewhere, feeling comfortable in the people that they genuinely care. Uh, all people need that. And um, I think a center like that would be, uh, it'd be wonderful, a program like that. And I think it'd be a great opportunity for a lot of agencies, because there's a lot of really good, caring agencies in Red Deer that could really work collaboratively in support of that. I think that's a wonderful idea. The not so fun aspect of recovery is that healing can also hurt, but together we won't have to heal alone. It sure makes it less painful and much faster. Uh, my name is Laura Alhamidat and I am the one of the event coordinators. Um, we're here for Ride for Respect, Poker Rally in partnership with Ubaka Urban Bulldogs Against Kids Abuse. We are trying to raise funds for our mobile support center, which is going to offer our free of charge services to those impacted by sexual violence in our rural communities. Uh, the reason why we need this is because mental health has been impacted in a very, very uh, enormous way, uh, whether it was because of COVID or because sexual violence victims were locked up with their abusers for two years. Um, so yeah, that's why we need to reach out um, because mental health is very important and trauma can impact our brains in a very, very severe way. Uh, it creates violence and we are trying to make this community a safer community that everyone can live in. Do you think a healing center would be a good thing for Red Deer? It would be a great addition in Red Deer. Um, it's not, to be honest, it's not an addition, it's a necessity because um, uh, healing takes a long time. And um, we know that Alberta Health Services have been suffering with mental health uh, services. There is a long, long line. We need therapists and psychiatrists and a healing center would be wonderful. People are sleeping through life as victims, you know, and it's true, people can be victimized, but it doesn't mean a person has to stay stuck in that victimhood. How awake are we? So as we manage our awakeness, we're uh, managing the way we think, what we're doing, and our self-image, and what it is that we're attracting into our life because uh, things don't just happen. 
we create based on thought and thought is based on mental wellness and you, know, you got to be healthy within your mind everything is about the way we think i think that's the core of healing is a healthy mind hi there i'm kate i am a spiritual coach i help people heal their mind, body, and soul all together as a trifecta. I've worked in the holistic health industry for five years now with a health food store, with teaching meditation, with coaching, with multiple different modalities. And it's an important piece that we're missing here in central Alberta. Because we focus on the mind, we've got the books, we've got the podcasts, we've got, you know, the mantras, the affirmations, how to work on that in the subconscious. We've got the physical of eating right, taking care of our bodies and exercise. But then there's the spiritual. That is the part that all of us are missing because when it comes down to the emotional well-being and where the root causes of things, it comes from our childhood. It comes from growing up. It comes from traumatic events in our life. It is the stories we wrap ourselves in that hold us in the place of dis-ease of emotional turmoil, of bodily dysfunctions. And a lot of the times we don't know where to go. We don't have the tools to move forward with that. And I believe working with the spiritual sense and giving those tools to people to have available is what's gonna be the massive shift in people truly healing and stepping forward. I'm Dale Joyle. And I'm Nicole Joyle. And we have Blissful Life Wellness in Red Deer. And part of what we do is breath work. We do integrative breathing and breath work is so foundational and so important. A lot of people don't really understand the importance. However, it is a holistic modality that supports people emotionally, mentally, spiritually, and physically. But it does things like lower our blood pressure when we breathe properly. It helps with uh, heart health. It helps with the main thing that a lot of what we're talking about here is the mental aspect. And when you have good emotional health, in other words, you're not carrying your emotional baggage around with you, but instead you're dealing with them and you're um, unloading and keeping yourself clear. And I also share sound therapy with people and among some other things that we do of laughter workshops and lots of other great stuff. But with sound therapy that I'm so extremely passionate about, um, lots of people don't know that everything has a frequency. Our thoughts have a frequency. Every feeling that's happening in our body, our organs, everything has a frequency. And so I really like to encourage people to think of sound as actually a form of nutrition that we take in. Not just how well we breathe or what we eat or supplements that we take or good water that we drink, but what we take in as sound is so important. And we actually don't just hear with our ears, we hear with our whole body. Our entire body actually absorbs sound frequencies. is actually even being used in forward-thinking hospitals now. It's so researched and it's so beneficial for every part of our body. Do either of you feel that a healing center in Red Deer would be a benefit to our community? Absolutely. I mean, uh, I think it's a real um, missing link for people. A lot of people, when they think of um, wellness, they think of it's more of a sick care system than a wellness care system. On this very day, we were named, Red Deer was named Canada's most active city for 2022. So that's a title that we, we've earned right across the entire scope of Canada by our physical activity, by our ability to get out and enjoy either internal uh, physical activity, external physical activity. But as I said, really we're built for a city of, uh, we're a city of active, uh, active people. So it's fantastic. Red Deer is famous for its amazing labyrinth of bike paths that weave their way through our city. Health guidelines recommend that adults exercise 150 minutes a week. This is great for those with the time and ability for this type of luxury. But the fact is, the engine that runs our daily services in Red Deer is operated by people who are overworked or work two or more jobs, often at night, and manage large families. A center for personal growth 
would have the abundant support necessary to sustain a healing community if we base it on volunteer efforts. People suffering from depression or other mental health disorders often have more challenges getting motivated and active, let alone getting out of bed and on a bike. In order to learn the value of human life, we must first put value on each other. You create your own value. All cultures have answers. We are all one family. I think that's that's the biggest failure that we have as communities is that we're so focused on one aspect like economic or the other that we don't look at everyone and the needs of everyone and we don't see everyone as somebody who deserves to be a part of a, a thriving community. There is a way for us to come together to help every single individual in the community thrive, to move beyond the the trauma, the hurt, the 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 brokenness that has put them where they are and move into a place where they are also contributing to the community like everyone else wants to. I would absolutely spread the word. I think it's very important that we have something in place um, instead of just kind of, I feel like we're doing a lot of crisis work and crisis work is important. I, I worked crisis for years, but I feel like Crisis isn't the solution to get to a healing point. It's just putting a Band-Aid on a bleeding wound that is soaking the Band-Aid. We need to start before it gets... We need to start at a healing point, I guess, at a safer spot. Having a healing center available to the citizens of Central Alberta and further would be beneficial for us all. Male, female, any gender, uh, LGBTQ+, plus, uh, you name it, um, all, all would be welcome in, in a place that, in my mind, would be for healing. I can't speak for the community, but I can speak for myself, and I think that anything preventative is, is much better than, than trying to solve the problems after the fact. So I think a healing center is a fabulous idea. I, 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 fully behind something like that. Okay, my name is Sherry Daichi. Um, I was thinking about the healing center for the healing rocks and for being able to soothe your mind, body and soul at the same time. And I just think it would be good for Red Deer. That's what we're missing in our community is that healing bit. There's a lot of um, there's a lot of, of rifts, of, I, I don't know if that's the word I'm looking for, but like, there's a lot of people that are very angry, very angry people um, in regards to people that haven't been able to heal that, and that creates more trauma, more trauma to the people. They just feel like they're excluded and without that connection, people don't get better. They actually get worse. People have become separated, they become dependent on devices and, um, and become separated again. And I think we need more events that bring people together. At its heart, leadership is about service. And Are we so, building it here? Well, that's it. And uh, we can't build it here unless we start, unless we start retaining, mm -hmm. you know, people like, like you, for example, or my son, he's probably be the same age or so. Uh, you know, that say, hey, there's a future in Red Deer in the arts, the future in music, uh, and all those things. And, um, you know, uh, give them that in a tangible way. So, yeah, you make a good point. Yeah. yeah. Well, I look forward to helping build a wonderful city together because I think it's an everybody job. <laughs> everybody has a little piece to, to add to the puzzle. So, thank Everyone. You I've said, I've said the Red Deerians out there, I've said, you know, in, in multiple, multiple times, you know, Red Deer, if you want to build a bigger city, Bit, or not bigger itself, but a better city, it starts with you. Right. It starts with you. And, you know, we need, we need to understand that institutions can only do so much. Governments can only do so much or whatever. Uh, and, and, and so it really starts, and this is where leadership comes in, you know, really. So 
Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. Thanks for voting for me. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure I, I made the right choice. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. I did not realize that. But uh, you know, um, gosh, uh, I'm honored. Thank you. Let's think outside this box. Open your cameras on your phone. Place it over the QR code, and when the page loads, follow the instructions. This is how you can help make this dream a reality. Let's imagine a space to secure our futures neutral ground in the heart of our city.